What is up with this ripple test, everyone? Good day, everyone. Today, we are going to test the King Bolin BM520 battery analyzer. Now, this may be the best thing out there and very, very good bang for your buck. The reason I bought it was it is a three in one. So it's more than just a battery analyzer. So it does test your battery fully. It tests your charging system, which is great. It's got a nice multimeter built in and the big color display doesn't hurt. So I found it on Amazon and it was $60, but actually right now they even have a 20% coupon off. So that works out to $48. So bang for your buck. This thing does a lot. Uh, multimeters, everyone can get them super cheap, but to get one that can actually test an alternator and do a ripple test, that's not so easy. So the price was really good on this one, but you know what, how did it perform? I always like to review things that I actually buy because I'll save you from buying crap if I think it's crap. Anyway, now that I've opened it up, you can see what's inside. First, we have a small cable, USB cable. You can plug that in and that's to do updates, but you know what, it's not like an automotive vehicle scanner. So I found I didn't even need to use it because I didn't have to do any updates. The manual surprisingly is very good and it is very clear. So I was happy about that because sometimes we get manuals that we just, you know, don't understand. Now at first glance, the instrument seems like it's really good quality. The buttons are nice rubber. They have a solid click to it. I'll pull off the nice protective film here. I found the rubber leads to be nice and soft and the clamps. I want to make specific note of the clamps because I think they are very good quality. You can see here, here's the top part of the clamp. But what I really liked was on the side, you can see these teeth so you can get them into hard to reach areas. Okay, so I have the King Bolin BM520 hooked up to my motorcycle. It is a 12 volt battery. And as you can see, the motorcycle is in the off position. It is not running. So here's the main menu. So you can see we have uh, the battery check. I'm just going to use this button right here. We have the waveform playback, records, setup and multimeter. So if we click OK, for example, for the multimeter, we're going to go, it is a 12 volt battery. I'm just using these to toggle up and down. All right, so we're going to start it up and see what happens. You can see where the needle is right there. Let's turn the key on. Key is on. You can see it's dropped. Let's hit the start button. And there you go. That's the multimeter portion. So we're going to hit the back button back again and we're going to use these toggles so we're going to go set up in the setup it's just for languages beep info and theme so it's pretty easy to do these things you can go here's theme one i actually like it it's a backlit display theme two it's a little bit darker and if we go okay theme three you can see it's even darker yet and then you can control your beeps languages and stuff like that now we're going to go to records i don't know if we have any records because we haven't really done anything let's check it out Last record, I guess this was the last uh, test or maybe when I was using the multimeter. So there's our last record. So we'll go okay, we'll use our back button. Up, up. there's our playback. Here's our, uh, oh, there we go, there's our waveform right there. And here we can see the waveform of the engine when it's actually running. So this is kind of neat. I can shut the engine off and you will see the voltage drop. You can see it's not running anymore. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start it. And there you can see the voltage is climbing because obviously I started the engine. So now the vehicle is charging again. So now let's go to the battery test right up here. So we're going to go battery test. So we're going to check our battery. So this one is a 12 volt. You have three options, six volt, 12 volt and 24. Now we're gonna do a quick test. Now I noticed that the quick test, uh, what that one does is it, def it defaults to the amp hours. So we'll go on quick test here. Yes, vehicle is off. And there's amp hours. This vehicle, uh, this motorcycle here, it's just a little battery. So it's only a 10 amp hour battery, but you can crank it right up if you have uh, a truck or something big. I don't know how high this goes. Let's take a look. So 220 amp hours is the max, but this battery is only a 10. So we're gonna go back down to 10. There we go, 10. So we're gonna go okay. And there you can see it is a little bit under 12 volts. So the SOH, that is the battery life. So it's telling us our battery is good. It has good life, but we should retest it after charging. And we know we're under 12 volts, so that's why we're getting that. So now we, I showed you the quick test. Let's do in vehicle and in vehicle tends to default to cold cranking amp. So we're in vehicle, we're gonna click there. And now that it's in vehicle, we can actually do a number of tests. So let's do the battery test first. 
Yes, vehicle is off. It's a regular flooded battery. It's not a gel cell or anything like that. It's just a regular battery. So there's our CCA at the top, cold cranking amps. This battery is 150 cold cranking amps, and you can put in whatever your battery is, your rating. This one is 150. So we're gonna do this. And there, our health is good. So what this tells me is our battery should still start the motorcycle. We're gonna start the vehicle, and we're gonna do some tests. So why don't we do the startup test first? So startup test, let's click OK. Yeah, engine is off, nothing's running. Start engine, all right. Here you can see the start load test is good as we only drop to 11.47 volts. So now let's do our charging test and see what happens. And wow, you can see there, there's actually quite a bit of ripple. Now, normally for an alternator, you should be less than 100 millivolts. So you know what, I tested this on my VW, and you can see there, we only have 39 millivolts. You know, we're bouncing around to 50, so we're really good. So I don't know if it's something with the motorcycle, and there you can see the VW pass with flying colors. But I'm wondering to myself, could this be something because the motorcycle doesn't have a regular alternator, it's got a permanent magnet with a stator? I'm not too sure. If there are any mechanics out there that are very familiar with a motorcycle charging system, please comment below. Anyway, it did pass. It was normal. Let's do the load test. We might have to rev it up a bit. We'll try it without revving it at first. And as you can see there on the screen, the motorcycle did pass and it is good. So the one thing I learned about this test is it is hard to keep the RPMs consistent with the motorcycle, but still it passed. So if you remember before, our battery didn't fare too well initially, but now that we've actually run the motorcycle and charged it, let's see how the battery fares now. And there you go. We're back to green because you can see our battery voltage is higher. We just ran it obviously so the battery accepted to charge. So back to the ripple test in the motorcycle. I still can't figure it out. This thing is all over the place so maybe it's just normal for a motorcycle. Once again, if there's any uh, motorcycle mechanics out there, let me know. So I give the King Bolin BM520 two thumbs up. This thing is absolutely great. I love it. It does a lot of really cool stuff. The biggest thing I wanted it for is not just a battery tester but to be able to test the charging system. To me that was huge because sometimes you can have a failed alternator and and you know it's hard to diagnose them sometimes because your voltage can actually be high but maybe one of the diodes or something like that is gone in the alternator and that is it for the video thank you for joining me this week if you have any questions comments or anything like that please leave them below that is it for now garage king over and out